Hey, I'm Ladi and this is everything you need to know before purchasing a cyberbike. This is a mid-drive frame that uses the hub motor that is mounted as a mid-drive. That has plenty of benefits. I would point out crazy amount of torque and much better ratio than when you have a hub motor on a rear wheel. That means we have a small sprocket here and the rear one is bigger, giving you all the best features. This is a mid-drive bike that has seat with two positions. This one is more for a crossing where you have nice weight distribution right in the middle. And this one is more for riding on the roads and overall commuting. It has a standard throttle like on a, any motorcycle. It has a three position switch that is programmable. It has a dynamic variable region. It has a built-in charger, hidden cord right here. So it's very convenient for users to charge anytime. Charging this beast is very straightforward. The controller needs to be on and then you just take the wire out, plug it into the wall socket and that's all you need to know. Built-in charger is hidden in a belly here and it has the front light and a tail light. To connect to the BMS I'm using an BMS that is uh, available for Android and iPhone and right away you can see a lot of interesting information like overall voltage, the highest cell, lowest cell, here is the cell difference and here is the temperature and here you can see all the cells. Why is this good to know? It's good to check sometimes what the temperature is on the hot days inside of the case. It's good to keep your batteries, your cells nice and balanced. And if you see there is a little difference, maybe like this, just keep it on the charger a little bit longer and that's gonna balance itself. Here is a little hidden switch right here that turns off completely the bike itself. That's a BMS button and that's pretty good when you go somewhere on a public spaces and you don't want anybody to accidentally turn on your bike. You can just hold it down for five seconds until you hear long beep. And then you can see my lights immediately went off and everything is shut down. If you want to turn the bike back on, you just press the button, you hear a beep, you let it sit for a few seconds and then you should be able to turn the bike on. To turn the bike on, there is a little hidden switch right below the screen. So you do a short press and right away you're in a main interface on the screen. This is the main interface of a nuclear controller right when you turn it on. You can see the number one here, that is power mode you're using. So this is reverse. This is the first mode that I usually use uh, for safety reasons, that means very slow acceleration, maximum speed 30 kilometers per hour. And this third mode is my full power 27 kilowatt beast monster. So you can always see the power mode there. Then you obviously see voltage, you see watt hours, you see how much electricity you have left. Then you, this is the speed, this is current amps, and this is temperature of the controller, temperature of the motor, and this is kilometers an hour. So I love using these controllers because that's a onboard computer, all the settings, all the information you always have with you. This button always signals to go kind of back and cancel. This is confirm and this is up and down. By pressing down, I can be changing volts and amps, 
to what and what hours. If I press the right button, you can see general statistics, you can see user statistics, trip statistics, or since the last charge. Always this left button is always to go back. And if I press it again on the main screen, I can go to menu and show you what we can do with this. So every single time you do some changes, you hit save settings, confirm and confirm. Now you have saved all the settings. If you don't save your settings, you usually reset what you set with turning the controller off and on. That's a really good safety feature. If you mess something up, you can always reverse it by turning the controller off. So this is the part that interests almost everybody. If you go to control modes, you can see what we have here. So this is a first power mode, phase one that goes to the motor, battery, what you drain from the battery and speed I have to 60%. Then it goes all the way to third mode where you can see Face amp, <laughs> 500 amps, battery 330 amps from the battery and speed is 150% because I'm using flux weakening. Braking phase you can easily set here if the brake is too aggressive or not enough aggressive and speed reverse is really practical thing too because going too fast on a reverse is becoming pretty dangerous. Face reverse if it's too slow for you. Field weakening is a kind of an overdrive that you can, you can ride faster than your voltage allows. This is pretty practical. You have acceleration, braking and shutdown. So these two are really interesting because higher the value you set, the more responsive throttle will be for acceleration. Same with braking. Advanced modes is pretty cool that you can go and change different settings for your different power modes. Some of the settings are a little bit more advanced so I'm not gonna cover them in this video, but just to give you a sneak preview, this is all you can be changing here. Converter is pretty epic. That allows us to have the built-in charger because you can essentially charge this bike through the face wires that go to the motor and because of this you can use any lower voltage than your battery pack is so this is super easy to just charge from 12 volts from the car or charge from any charger that has lower voltage than what you need then you go to convert and you can change supply max right here so 38 amps charges roughly with two kilowatts and if you want to be charging with three kilowatts you just enter bring it up to roughly 54 and you'll be charging with three kilowatts now i'm usually not in a rush so i on a daily basis charge with two kilowatts this is interesting configuration here too, where you can change settings on your programmable three position switch. So what I have in there is reverse on a port six, then I have on a port five my speed, my third 
highest power mode and on the port for first power mode. So you can change, for example, somebody might not like the reverse, so you can change it and have three different power modes. Or you can have a neutral as a second button. It's up to you what you decide to do. So if I can show you instead of a slow power mode, I can go and change and find neutral. Here we go. These controllers are definitely the best on the market. It's difficult to get, there is a usually four months waiting list for them. But I usually try to have few in stock, so if you're interested, if you want to have one of these, just shoot me a message and we'll see how much the shipping would be to your place. So essentially what you need to know for the maintenance is lubricating the chain making sure the chain has the right tension so this is roughly it should be right in the middle should go up and down roughly the width of the chain so you can see this is well tensioned uh, chain so as you ride it might loosen up a little bit it is nothing easier than just unloosing these two bolts on both sides and then you can do like a 10 minute spin with this tensioner uh, to make it work the way it needs to be uh, the rear wheel is very easy to take off, that's seriously only these two bolts, loosening this and uh, pushing it forward, take the chain off and then you can pull the entire wheel off. That's pretty good and convenient for multiple reasons because you can be playing with the rear sprocket, you can have a smaller one for uh, lower torque and higher maximum speed or you can have a bigger one for incredible torque and a little bit lower maximum speed. Obviously, you're checking the pressure in the tires and that's pretty much all the maintenance needs to be done on a cyberbike. Just always when you're putting the rear wheel back on, make sure it's aligned with the front wheel. The way to do it, the easiest way is taking the straight line, it might be a straight plank, and going from the rear wheel to the front and see if it touches on all of all four contacts. So always keep that in mind when you're doing anything with a real wheel. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you learned something new about the Cyberbike and this incredible controller we've been using. Stay tuned for the follow-up videos. Uh, we're planning much more cool content and see you next time in another video.